Welcome to Moab Adventure Condo. Today I'm going to tell you about an excellent hike I had to the Lewis Lodge ruins. The Lewis Lodge is located on a side canyon of Arch Canyon. And we were camping in the area, so we decided to take our UTV up to this area and check out the ruin for ourselves. This ruin involves a long ride on a dirt road that climbs up to 7,900 feet and then eventually drops back down to 6,700 feet as you enter the canyon. So going in the winter time would probably be difficult. Also, due to the exposure on the cliffs, there's no way anyone in their right mind would want to go out on the edge of these cliffs. But as you can see, this place is just visually stunning. To imagine there's this crack on the side of a canyon wall, you're about 700 feet up in the air, and they constructed all of this just for who knows what reasons. Some people say defensive reasons, some people say for religious reasons. You can come up with your own conclusions. I honestly have no idea why you would construct this here. Even in the summertime, it's just very sketchy to come out on this ledge. From here, you can see the spot that you have to come down to access the ruin. And this little trail right here is only maybe six to 12 inches wide. So it's very sketchy. So you have to go from where this, down that side and then circle around from kind of where this drone took off and then you can see the ruin in the crack here, if you look real close. There are 44 different rooms in Kievs. They're all in various states of disrepair. So be sure not to um, touch the ruins or, you know, when I say touch them, I mean, don't lean up against them. Some people that I take to places like this, I simply don't invite back because they can't keep their hands, they can't keep their hands to themselves. I mean, they're constantly leaning up against the rocks, up against the walls, and these places are very fragile. And I know you could say, well, hey, he's walking around here, he's doing damage, but I'm not touching anything that is still standing. The only things I'm touching are my shoes to the ground and maybe some of the collapsed ruins. But enough of that, let's just enjoy the architecture here. It is simply amazing to see this. Think about carrying all these rocks out here and the mortar that was required to build this. And just, I know I feel very confident in my footing, but just coming out here for any time at all, walking back and forth, it's only a matter of time before you trip and you know, possibly fall off the edge of this. It is literally, it's not a slope down. It is a sheer cliff off the edge. You can see I kind of sped up the video right here because I wanted to do a complete hike all the way through. And this part is kind of, there's no structures here. It's just a bunch of rubble. But, you know, imagine a family. Some people say, that the Asante or ancient Fremont Indians moved away here because of famine. Well, you know, maybe so. Or maybe they moved into locations like this and it would be impossible to raise a child here. There's no possible way you could raise a child here without the child falling off the edge within a matter of minutes, much less the years it takes for a kid to grow up. So if they, if the population collapsed and they were living on cliffs like this, I can surely see why. But in my opinion, there's no way anyone could live on here. Maybe these were just granaries and storage and they came out here every once in a while. But man, this it just seems impossible to anybody will live here. The further out you get, the better the cliff is that's over top of the ruins. And maybe the 
pottery hunters and just tourists like me chicken out the further you go out. So these are actually in better shape than the ones that are closer to the beginning of the trail. And, you know, maybe another reason for this location is there is a pretty good spring back in the corner of this canyon, right as the canyon begins. But just imagine being out here and just waking up to this view. Oh man, it's just amazing. I really enjoyed my hike down here, but just be forewarned that the main road going up to this area, pretty much any vehicle should be able to pass it. But the side road that comes over here is very difficult. You would have to have a four-wheel drive at a minimum. I used our side-by-side, -side, and I just find that using a side-by-side I like to explore. I'm not the kind of person that goes out and wants to do crazy rock crawls, but using the side-by-side, -side, I can travel at a dis decent rate of speed to get out to these locations. And this gives me the opportunity to explore things that I otherwise would not be able to explore. And the side road was pretty difficult and you go down to a fence and you park at a fence, and from that fence, there's a, some people call it a well-marked trail. I'm gonna say there's an obvious trail. It's not too well-marked. There's no signs or anything indicating that the Lewis Lodge is out the trail, but just using people's waypoints that I was able to find on the internet, I found this place on my first attempt with no difficulty at all. The only difficulty I had was kind of to scramble to get down into the canyon because you do it from the opposite side of the canyon from where the ruin is, and that might throw a few people off. But <clears throat> overall, very few people visit this area. There was a, a log book, and I think maybe one or two people had been out here since the winter, so not very many groups at all come out and it's just very inaccessible to even get down to the Arch Canyon area. If you're coming from Moab, it's like a two hour drive to get down here. And if you're coming from anywhere else, it's just literally at the end of the map. It's in the middle of nowhere. There's nothing else in this area. <clears throat> 